Although I have been using the advanced filter in Excel for over a decade to extract records from a list based on multiple conditions, however, today I learned an amazing lesson from using the same tool I have been using for years. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you how to extract records from a list based on multiple conditions. We'll then focus on the labels in the Advanced Filter dialog box. Arrange them in one single line, and surprisingly, that would be the VBA code to perform the same task. You can watch my tutorial on how to extract records conditionally using nested functions, power query, or dynamic arrays by clicking on the links below this video. For now, let's explore the mind-blowing mirroring functionality between the advanced filter and the single line of code in VBA. Here is my start file. You can download the exercise file and follow along by clicking on the link below this video. In this worksheet, I have a list which shows a date, a region, a manager, a customer, cost of goods sold, and sales. And then in column I and J, I have two drop lists, one for the region and one for the manager. I want to be able to select an option from each one of these drop lists and then be able to extract the records starting from cell L1. I want to extract the records outside the list. I want to copy the records where the two conditions are met in the copy range, which is L1. I'm going to do that by using two different methods. I'm going to use first a tool, a built-in tool in Excel called the Advanced Filter, and then I want to read meticulously the different labels available in the Advanced Filter dialog box because they map perfectly to the VBA code that I'll be creating. So first of all, let's select any single cell and to create an advanced filter, I can either use the shortcut Alt-AQ or I can click on the data tab of the ribbon and here click on Advanced. The Advanced Filter dialog box opens and the first thing I notice is that the list range is automatically selected for me. Excel was able to recognize the entire list and Excel was able to do that because I have blank cells all around. And then it asked me, what would you like to do in this advanced filter? What's the action you want to do? And the action can be one of two things. Would you like to filter in place? No, I want to copy to another location. I want to copy to cell L1. And the copy to box is grayed out, but the moment I select copy to another location, then in this case, the copy to box becomes active. I want first to specify my conditions, and my conditions are these four cells from I1 to J2. So I put my blinking cursor in the criteria range and select the label and select the option coming from the drop list as well. Then I put my blinking cursor in the copy to and select cell L1, which is my destination cell. Do you want to extract unique records? No, I don't want that, so I'm not checking this box, and then I hit OK. When I hit OK, all the records where the two conditions are met, East and Belissa, are extracted outside, and that was very easy to do by using an advanced filter. And now I want to show you the dialog box one more time. When you open the Advanced Filter dialog box, it highlights the range that you want to filter. You then select the action you want to do. I want to copy to another location. Select the Criteria range. Then select the Copy to range. I don't want unique records, so I don't check the box. And then hit OK. Let's repeat. Select the list range to which you apply an advanced filter. You then select the action you want to do. I want to copy to another location. 
Excel filter copy. Specify the criteria range. Specify the copy to range. I don't want unique records. That equals false. And that's the code in VBA. Now let's do it in Excel. I go to the next worksheet VBA and I would like to perform the same exact task one more time by writing an extremely simple code in VBA. If you have never created a code in VBA, just follow me. Our code maps perfectly to what we did in the Advanced Filter dialog box. Now I want to start creating my code that will be filtering this list from B1 to G351 and will be using the conditions in this range from I1 to J2 and I'll be extracting the records in cell L1. Let's create that code. I want to switch to the Visual Basic Editor and to switch to the Visual Basic Editor I hit Alt F11. My Visual Basic Editor opens and I can expand my Visual Basic Editor. I can then restore it down and in order to create a code I need somewhere to write this code and this somewhere is called a module so I want to insert a module. I go to the insert menu and then I select module. I can use the shortcut Alt I M. Any code starts with the keyword sub so when I type sub and then followed by a space I want to name my code filter form and the moment I hit enter the word sub will turn blue and opening and the closing bracket will be added and the end sub will be added as well. Between the sub and end sub I need to write my extremely simple code and my code maps perfectly to the dialog box of the advanced filter. I select the list range, range, open bracket and in double quote I type B1G351 what would you like to do? I want to apply an advanced filter, so I type dot advanced filter. I can even select it by hitting tab, and that's the first part. This is what happened when you clicked on advanced filter on the data tab in Excel. Then I type a space, and we are answering the questions one by one. Action. What's the action you want to perform? So I type action, colon, equal sign. I select from the drop list, would you like to filter in place or you want to Excel filter copy, copy to another location, I hit tab, Excel filter copy. Then to move to the next argument as if I'm creating a function in Excel, I hit comma. It asks me about the range having the condition, that's called the criteria range. So I type criteria range, colon equal sign. My criteria range at this range from I1 to J2. So I can type range open bracket double quote and then I1 colon J2. Then I continue writing my code still mapping to the dialog box of the advanced filter. I hit comma. Where is your copy to range? So copy to range colon equal sign and my copy to range is cell L1 we write it range L1 and the last argument the box that we did not check so I type comma unique colon equal sign false which means I did not check this one this is my VBA code I'm done with the code and this code maps perfectly to what we did in the advanced filter dialog box well I could run this code and it will work just fine but we have two issues here so let me minimize and go back to Excel. I hard-coded the range from B1 to G351. What if I make it dynamic? So whenever I add more records or I delete some records, my code will work just fine. It will accommodate for whatever size of list and whatever the number of rows I have in a list. If I was in Excel and I want to find out the number of rows, what would I do? I would select cell B1 and then I want to jump to the very end so I hit control down arrow and here I grab the row number which is 351 I'm going to do the same exact thing but instead of storing it in the code 351 
I'm going to store it in a box. I'm going to store it in a variable. And the contents of this variable will change whether I add or delete rows. So adding a variable instead of hard coding the row number 351 will make my code much more powerful. A variable has to be declared and we use the keyword dim to declare a variable. And at the same time, I have to specify the data type. So let's go back to our code. To switch to the Visual Basic Editor, I hit Alt F11. And here at the top, just below the sub, I want to declare my variable and I'm going to give it a name, last row, and I'm going to specify the data type. I could say an integer. Integer can accommodate up to 32,000. What if I have a much bigger number of rows? Then in this case, instead of integer, I'll be using long. So let me write these two lines and I'll explain them. Dim, last row as long. The name of my variable is last row. What does this variable store? The variable named last row is storing the number of the last row. When I did it in Excel, I selected cell B1, range B1, and then I hit Control down arrow, and Excel down is the equivalent of Control down arrow, and I want to extract the row number, and that's done by typing dot row. So I'm declaring the variable dim last row as long. Last row is storing the number of the last row, and it's equal to range B1 dot end Excel down dot row. If I run this code this time, last row will be storing the number of the last row. And because I want to use this number, so I'm going to modify this code a little bit by deleting the colon G351. And then I say, I want to start at range B1, but I want to resize it. So I type dot resize and I open bracket. The resize command is asking for a certain number of rows and a certain number of columns. I want to resize to a certain number of rows equal to whatever is stored in the last row variable. So I type last row. And for the number of columns, I have six columns, so I type six. I'm almost done with my code. The list range is range B1. That's a starting point. I want to extend it down to the last row, and I want to extend it to the right, six columns and I'm applying the advanced filter that we created a while ago. Every time I run this code, it will be extracting in cell L1. Let me reduce the size of my Visual Basic Editor one more time, and let's have a look at the Excel window. Every time I extract, I'll be extracting in L1. What happens when I change my conditions? When I change my condition, then I will have the result of the previous filter. So before extracting the new set of records with a new set of conditions, I need to clear this area. So I select cell L1, and as if I'm hitting Control A in Excel, I want to delete all the records that were extracted the previous time. Let me switch to the Visual Basic Editor Alt F11, and here I'll be typing range L1 dot current region dot current region is the equivalent of Control A dot clear contents, as if I'm selecting cell L1, and I expand my selection to the current region Control A, and then I hit the delete key. Now I'm ready to test my code. So I'm going to click inside that code, and then I hit the F8 key. When I hit F8 when I hover over last row, which is my variable, look at the little screen tip it said. This variable, this container is storing nothing at this point. It has a value of zero. But when I hit another F8 to run this line of code, now it's storing a value of 351. The next line of code will have no effect because I don't have anything in this range. So I hit F8. And now I'll be extracting the records where the region is east and the manager is Melissa. Let's do that. I hit another F8 and I extracted the records. When I hit F8, I finished my subroutine. I want to change my conditions and test one more time. So I click on, let's say, West. And instead of Melissa, I'm going to select, let's say, Steve. And then I want to run my code one more time, Alt F11. 
and then I run the code this time in one single go. Let me resize my Visual Basic Editor and close the Project Explorer. I want to run this code by clicking on the Run button. When I click on the Run button, here are the records for West and Steve. If you don't want to run the code from the Visual Basic Editor or even from the macro dialog box, then in this case we can add an extremely simple code to the change event of the worksheet. Let me do that. To bring the change event there are different ways. I'm going to right click on the sheet tab and from the right click menu I select view code. In my Visual Basic Editor I see two drop lists. I want to bring the worksheet event so I click on the upper left drop list and then I select Worksheet. An event has been added. A private sub has been added. I don't want that one. So from the other drop list on the right hand side, I select the Change event, not the Selection Change. When I select the Change event, I can now delete the first one, the Selection Change, and I'll be working on the Change event. It says by the value of the target. And I want to say, if my target is cell I2, or if my target is cell J2, well, I want to trigger the filter form code. So how do I write this? I have to write a conditional statement, so I expand the space between the private sub and end sub, and I write a conditional statement. If target.address equals range i2.address, or if target.address equals range j2.address, which means in case there is a change in any one of these two cells, then automatically call filter form. And then I close the end if and I'm done. That's an extremely simple event code. Now whenever there is a change in i2 or whenever there is a change in j2, then the filter form, the code that we created earlier, will be triggered automatically. Let's test. I close my Visual Basic Editor and let's go back to Excel. Now I'm going to change the region. When I select the region and I select Midwest, the code is triggered and Midwest and Steve are extracted. And here if I change the name of the sales rep and I select, let's say, Nabil, Midwest and Nabil, let's change it to Amanda, Midwest and Amanda. Everything is dynamic and you can see that I have a conditional formatting applied, which highlights the records. If you enjoyed this training video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel and ring the bell to be notified when your tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thank you for watching and see you next time.